Hey and welcome back to Thrust Curve. Today we're going to talk about the workhorse of ISRO, the PSLV, and I'm going to explain all of its stages. So let's get started. The PSLV or the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle is a four-stage rocket with alternative solid and liquid boosters. It's as high as a 15-story building at about 44 meters and it has a diameter of 2.8 meters, which means I couldn't even fit in it even if I extended my arms. It has a max payload capacity of 1.8 tons to sun synchronous orbit, which is a polar orbit as the name suggests. Polar orbit means that it goes from north to south pole in a 97 degree inclination orbit. This means that if it could go on an equatorial orbit, it could carry 3.8 tons to low earth orbit. The total payload capacity of the PSLV actually depends on the configuration of the PSLV being used and also on the various tank sizes of the fourth stage. We'll talk about this later in the video. Now let's talk about the PSLV stages. The first stage of the PSLV is a solid propellant booster, which uses HTPB as its fuel. It's among the largest solid boosters in the world. Its casing is made up of high strength steel and it's made up of five segments. These five segments are assembled at the launch pad and come together to form the entire first stage. This stage uses the SITVC system to maintain its attitude during launch and thus has two SITVC tanks on either side. These tanks are filled with strontium perchlorate and this strontium perchlorate is injected into the nozzle at various sections to increase the thrust at those sections and to maintain control. Just below these SITVC tanks are two roll control thrusters. These allow the PSLV to maintain its roll, which is the spin, and to not let it go uncontrollably spinny during the launch. The two roll control thrusters on the PSLV are actually ignited 2.8 seconds before the main core ignition at T0. Now a thing that I find very interesting about this stage is that this is the same stage as is used in the core stage of the GSLV Mark II. Well, almost the same. That stage was derived from this stage of the PSLV and thus they are interchangeable. They even use the same end caps as you can see here. The PS1 and the GS1 are almost the same stage. The first stage of the PSLV separates away from the second stage of the PSLV using retro rockets housed on the interstage on the top, as you can see here. These retro rockets fire during stage separation and push the stage away so that there is no collision while staging. The design of the PSLV allows it to increase its payload capacity by using additional strap-on boosters. And as the name suggests, these boosters can be strapped onto the core stage, matching the payload requirement. The PSLV uses two classes of boosters the 6 ton class and the 12 ton class. The 6 ton boosters use 6 tons of propellant in them and the 12 ton class uses 12.2 tons of propellant in them. These boosters use HTPB as their fuel and are derived from the first stage of the SLV launch vehicle. And since it's the channel name, here are the different types of thrust curves used for both the PSOM and the PSOM XL, along with the different types of grains used on the solid boosters. The SITVC system is not only present on the core stage, but also on the PSOM side boosters. They have tiny spherical strontium perchlorate tanks on the top between the nose cones, and also have injectors on the nozzle. They actually depend on the various configurations of the PSLV. We'll talk about these configurations later in the video. Now let's move on to the second stage. The second stage of the PSLV uses a single Vikas engine. The Vikas engine is one of the most reliable engines India has. The second stage is a hypergolic stage. Hypergolic means that there are two chemicals which react so vigorously together and are so aggressive that when they are brought in contact with each other, they spontaneously ignite and thus do not need an ignition source. The stage is 12.8 meters in length and carries about 42 tons of propellant. The Vikas engine uses thrust vector control, which means it actually gimbals left and right to maintain stability. And the stage also has RCS control for roll. The roll RCS of this stage actually just uses the hot gases coming from the gas generators of the Vikas engine, as you can see here. The hypergolic fuels used in the second stages are dinitrogen tetroxide and unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. These fuels can be stored at room temperature and thus do not require cryogenic cooling, but they are also carcinogenic and highly toxic. Even though they, are, they can be stored at room temperature, the second stage oxidizer tank has been encapsulated in an insulating foam material to save it from overheating or boiling during the fueling processes on the launch pad due to the sun overhead. These insulating foam materials are shredded during the launch using pyrotechnic strings so that extra weight isn't carried. 
The second stage also has retro rockets on the bottom near the interstage of the first stage. This retro rockets fire to separate it from the fourth stages and also to push it away from the first stage during staging. The second stage also has a toroidal water tank and nitrogen gas bottles for the Vikas engine. These helium gas bottles are used to pressurize the main tanks and the toroidal water tank on the bottom is used to cool down the hot gases in the gas generators of the Vikas engine. Now let's talk about the third stage. The third stage of the PSLV is actually housed inside the interstage for the second stage. It is invisible from the outside even during launch. It's a solid rocket booster which uses HTPB as its fuel, has a diameter of 2 meters and produces 240 kN of thrust. Its body is actually made up of Kevlar which is a very strong material and it uses nozzle flex for control. The flex nozzle is in my opinion very cool. What it does is the nozzle actually has actuating gears and a flexible seal. This means that the nozzle changes its shape and flexes in the direction that it wants additional thrust and thus maintains stability. Now, it does not have any roll control thrusters. So this actually works in tandem with the fourth stage and uses the fourth stage roll control thrusters. The fourth stage RCS is actually the roll control thruster for this stage. Now let's talk about the fourth stage itself. Now comes the fourth stage. The fourth stage is, in my opinion, the best stage and it's my favorite. Can you spot it? No? Well, that's because the fourth stage is entirely housed inside the fairing of the PSLV. The only part visible from the outside is this ring, which connects it to the interstage of the second stage and also houses the RCS thrusters. The fourth stage is a liquid stage and it's also a hypergolic stage. It uses monomethyl hydrazine as its fuel and some oxides and some mixtures of nitrogen dioxide as its oxidizer. The fourth stage has two engines and the main tank in the middle actually houses the propellant for these two engines and is made up of titanium alloy. These two engines, which are rarely seen, produce 7.4 kN of thrust each and are gimbaled for thrust vector control. The Kevlar gas bottles on the side actually house the propellants for the RCS of the stage, which helps in roll control of the fourth stage and this stage itself. These engines are pressure fed and they're regeneratively cooled in the combustion chamber using the fuel. They're actually derived from the PSLV roll control thruster and are basically the roll control thruster with a nozzle extension for better performance in vacuum. The parts for these engines and the main combustion chamber are manufactured by a company called Asako and they've been making them ever since PSLV started flying. Since then, they've delivered more than 200 engines to ISRO. This stage is actually very unique as it can deploy multiple payloads into multiple orbits and actually holds the record for the most payloads deployed, which is 104 satellites. Along with deploying satellites into multiple orbits, this stage can actually be used as an orbital platform or a standalone satellite bus, like the Photon from Rocket Lab which means that this stage can actually stay in orbit long enough to do experiments. During the C-45 mission, this stage was equipped with fixed solar panels on the tanks so that it could stay longer and generate its own power, which means that this stage can also generate power and provide it to experiments on board, which gives it a huge advantage. Now let's move on to the last and final thing, which is the variants of the PSLV. The PSLV had many planned variants, like the PSLV HP, which then went on to become a standard on all the variants. But the current active fleet are the PSLV XL, the QL, the DL, and the CA. The XL has six strap on boosters, where the QL has four strap on boosters, and the DL has two strap on boosters. The CA or core alone has no strap on boosters, but instead uses modified SITVC tanks as aerodynamic stabilizers. The PSLV-G was the standard generic version of the PSLV until it got discontinued along with the 910 class of boosters. The fourth stage of the PSLV also has three versions. These versions depend on the amount of propellant in the main tank. The three variations are the 1.6 ton version, the 2.6 ton version and the 0.8 ton version. These different versions are chosen depending upon the payload size in the fairing and also on the variations of the PSLV being used to launch them. The last and final variation of the PSLV was just a concept and never got off the drawing board. This version was called the PSLV 3S, which meant it only had three stages. 
They did this by removing the second stage. This version only had a payload capacity of 500 kilometers to low Earth orbit. If you want to learn more about this, go and watch this video by Garif Scientist. Now let's move on to the reliability of the PSLV. The PSLV is one of the most reliable launches India has. With a success rate of 94%, it has launched one of the most high-profile missions ISRO has, like the Mangalyaan mission, the Chandrayaan mission, and even has a record for launching the most satellites in a single launch. The PSLV launched 104 satellites in a single launch, which is why it has the nickname, the Workhorse of ISRO. This video would have been very long if I included all the launch development, the vehicle development, and the launch history of the PSLV. So uh, that's all in the part 2 of this video, the video which will cover the various upgrades made to the PSLV over the years and how it's changed from the first vehicle that it was. So stay tuned for that video and again I want to thank you all for watching this video and I'm so grateful that we reached 157 subscribers and uh, I hope you like this video too. If you like the long format of videos which this is, please uh, comment down below and also consider subscribing, sharing and liking this video. And remember, space is for all of us. And if you want regular tweets about space, follow me on Twitter. This is my ad.